normally in hundredths of an inch and millimeters are, as the name says, thousandth of a millimeter. So caliber, if we're going to measure it, remember that we've got lands and grooves. The grooves are the low points. So we want to measure from low point to low point. So we're going to look at opposite grooves. And then we're going to have that measurement in fractions of an inch. So a 0.22 inch diameter is what we would call a 22 caliper. We could also say 9 millimeter uh, in the case of a 9 millimeter, which would be just smaller than a centimeter, which would be 10 millimeters. So from groove to groove, that would be uh, the diameter we're talking about for caliper. So in a 22, this would measure 0.22 inches across from groove to groove. Now, we can have lots of different calipers, but different types of bullets. So let's look at what some of those types might be. Uh, before we get to that, just a couple of other things to consider. Shotguns are usually measured by gauge, which we're going to talk about in a moment. You can also define ammunition by the type and amount of powder it uses. Remember that term magnum that we heard in the previous set of notes. Uh, dimension and shape of the bullet. What is the bullet made of? So what uh, elements make it up? And then there are other features as well. The cartridge itself has four parts, the case, primer, powder, and projectile. The case is normally made of brass, nickel, or steel. So when you fire that bullet, the case is left behind. And so that term you've heard uh, in forensics that the suspect policed their brass What's that mean? They picked up their cases off the ground and took them with them so that they didn't leave the evidence behind. Um, the primer we've talked about before, yeah, which is a shock sensitive compound that's going to ignite the powder internally. So the gunpowder, which does the combustion that creates the pressure that then sends the bullet down the barrel in out the end of the barrel called the muzzle. And so that would be the projectile. So we've got the end of the bullet here being exposed. We've got its casing. We've got the powder. And then we've got the primer. And of course, this could be center fire or rim fire. Again, looking at this uh, diagram that we've seen before, the cartridge is loaded into the chamber. So this is an entire live round of ammunition. The bullet is going to go down the barrel, being spun by the twist of the lands and grooves to create stability as it leaves. This is all uh, internal ballistics. When it leaves the gun, that's going to be external ballistics. And when it hits its target, that's going to be terminal ballistics. We'll be getting into that in the next section of notes. Now, in the chamber, we notice the cartridge is normally a little bit larger than the bullet, so that can remain behind. This was the primer down here, and the firing pin is going to strike that. This back area here is, again, the breech face. For a reaction, there's an opposite and equal reaction. So as that bullet is propelled forward by the force of that pressure from the explosion or the combustion of the gunpowder, the cartridge is pushed backwards into this breech face. That can impart impressions on this back surface that we may want to look at later. But that can also be part of the recoil of the gun. In other words, how it pushes back into you when the bullet leaves its end. There are other measurements that you might see, especially on an ammunition box. Um, so in this case here, where they're giving us two numbers, this first one here is uh, a width, and the second one is a length. And again, shotgun um, shells are typically measured in gauge. The lower the number, the larger the diameter. So a four gauge would be very large. 12 gauge would be smaller, 20 gauge smaller still. Uh, the bullets come in various types and sizes, and we see different suffixes for this. So an FMJ is a full metal jacket. Uh, it's the most common type of bullet. So when we look at the bullet itself that's going to fly through the air, that could have a soft metal core such as lead, but we could then encapsulate it. In other words, we could coat it with a harder metal, and that harder metal could be, for example, copper. Uh, the shape of these, they could be pointy, they could be round, they could be flat. There's some variety there also. Uh, what we expect for a full metal jacket um, when you're doing a forensics investigation, whether uh, this was a fatality or just an injury, 
uh, we would look maybe at the wound channel. Wound channel is literally where the bullet uh, damaged the tissue as it passed through it. So in this case, we expect it to go all the way through the target and go out the other side and to be small. In other words, uh, it passed through its target um, without really um, having to slow down too much. Okay, that's a generalization. We need to talk about this idea of wounds a little bit later on in another day. So looking at a full metal jacket, internally here, this is a lead core perhaps, and then this whole thing is covering it entirely. That is the full metal jacket. Under here is the gunpowder, down here is that primer. Hollow point is different. Um, compared to the full metal jacket, it has sort of an open end. And it's made to expand uh, or deform when it hits a target. It sort of mushrooms or peels back. They're the go-to round for police officers. Uh, they often refer to this as a controlled penetration. What's that mean? And why would the police officers want that? Well, if you're a police officer, you obviously don't want to have to draw your firearm. You certainly don't want to have to use it. But if you did and you had to shoot someone, you don't want the bullet coming out the other side and then hitting an innocent bystander. So a hollow point is made to expand when it hits something. So yes, it goes into the body, it penetrates, but it doesn't come out the other side, and that's what they mean by controlled. Okay, so this is a hollow point, so we can see that it is exposed. Uh, it has some consequences for the aerodynamics of the projectile. So when we talk about the flight of the bullet, when we get to ballistics, there's air that's going to be pushing in here. And there's going to be air resistance in this chamber. And then when it hits um, a tissue or a fluid, that's going to peel these back and deform it because this is going to be thinner. This part's thicker. A lot of pressure can build up internally because of the opening and it literally deform those and peel those back. We'll see that in a later slide. Open tip is usually a result of the manufacturing process. It's not as much intended to be a hollow point. It doesn't deform as much. It doesn't expand very effectively. Um, and really, I'm simply mentioning it here because it is a type that you might encounter. And so here we can see just a little tiny opening here. A ballistic tip is basically a hollow point, but it gets covered with a plastic tip. And what we're trying to do is make it um, aerodynamically more like a full metal jacket. One of the benefits to this full metal jacket is it's very streamlined. So if we back up for a minute um, and we look at the uh, full metal jacket here, it's fully enclosed so air isn't getting in here versus again the hollow point, air can get in here and deform it or it can um, uh, create some resistance as it goes to the air. doesn't seem like it because it travels so fast to the naked eye, uh, but in reality, it does play a big role. So now when we go here, yeah, there's a little opening here, but what if we could cover that? So that's what the ballistic tip is for. It streamlines it. And so this basic design is sometimes called a boat tail. We'll come back to that term in a minute. So here, this tip is covering that hollow opening to make it more uh, efficient as it travels. Now, when you look at this, if you were pretending you were a bird looking down on it and it was a rowboat and not a bullet, um, you might think this does look like a rowboat and that the back end of it here would be the tail where it tapers. That's what they mean by a boat tail, sort of tapering in. We also have soft points. So what that means is the lead is actually exposed at the tip and that softer lead is designed to flatten when the bullet hits its target. And again, the boat tail is a tapering, really for stabilization of flight through the air. Okay, so here we see an example of a, the soft tip that's exposed lead. Okay, it's not hollow, uh, but it then still peels back pretty well. So this would be a deformed bullet. This is what we mean by mushrooming or peeling back. This is what a hollow point would want to do. Uh, when we talk about um, types of ammunition for shells of shotguns, we have to talk about um, the pellets that are inside. So this is called shot. We can see there's lots of different types. So some of that's called uh, bird shot, might be called buckshot. There's different types. Um, again, 
You'll see some other terms like wad cutter, for those of you not familiar, that is mostly for target practice um, or competition shooting. And getting on to some common types of examples of ammunition, a 2-2-LR is a 22 long, stands for 22 long rifle. The 22 part is the caliper, so it's 0.22 uh, inches in diameter. And the LR stands for long rifle, um, but that can be a little misleading. It doesn't have to be fired from a rifle. Um, it's more of a, uh, one of the nice things about it is it has very little recoil. So we talked about that earlier. So when it pushes, when the gun pushes back, that's the recoil. Uh, and this has very little of that. So what do we mean by that um, name long rifle being misleading? Uh, there are very small guns. This is not a toy. This is real. Fully operational firearm. Fits in the hand. Takes full rounds of ammunition. Uh, multiple ones in this revolver. Um, and there are guns of this size that can take a 22 long. So it does not have to be a rifle is the point. Now, there are so many different types of ammunition that it can be confusing. It can be overwhelming. We're just going to run through the names of a few. I want to point out a couple of features. I'm not going to talk about everything on every single slide. Uh, this has been presented to you. You can go back and read them if you want more information about it. Uh, what I want to point out here, um, you might see something like ACP. That stands for Automatic Colt Pistol. Again, doesn't have to be used exclusively in an automatic Colt pistol. It's just part of the naming. Uh, 0.22 here, of course, is the 22. Compare that to a 25. Okay, 25 is a little bit bigger. That's a quarter of an inch. This is only 0.22 of an inch. Go up to a 38. Okay, well, the 38 uh, is going to be bigger still. Okay, so this is considered a low power round mostly for a close range shooting. Down here we see a picture comparing a 22 to a 38, so you can clearly see the difference in diameter size. Uh, nine millimeter um, is usually what we call it for short. We call it a nine millimeter, we call it a nine mil. Um, officially it's called a nine by 19 millimeter parabellum or a nine millimeter Luger, okay? Um, we're not gonna get into all the history on that right now. What I want you to see down here is there are eight different examples of nine millimeter cartridges. And they're all nine millimeters in diameter, but there's different types. So some are hollow point, one is a soft point, maybe full metal jacket. The other names there, uh, some of that are manufacturer names. So Remington, Winchester, Federal, for example. On the bottom there, they give you different grains. Uh, that has to do with a measurement of the gunpowder, and it's really beyond what we need to worry about for this course. Okay, so a 40 S and W. Okay, um, originally designed for the FBI, and it's popular among other law enforcement agencies. But what we want to just see here is the increasing size with the increasing caliber number. Okay, a 45 larger still. Okay, 38 Special is only mentioned here. Now that one is smaller than the, the 45, uh, obviously. Uh, but um, it's, the reason we're mentioning it here is it's very commonly found in revolvers. So if you recovered this, you might be thinking that this was used in a revolver. Okay, 357 Magnum. Okay, 357 itself is maybe the diameter of that ammunition, but Magnum as we know, refers to it having uh, some more gunpowder than what you might normally expect. And so it's gonna have a larger explosion. On to the shotgun rounds. 12 gauge is the most uh, popular shotgun round. Again, uh, the size of those gauges uh, is sort of backwards from what you might think. So a four gauge is large and a 28 gauge is small. And then notice here, this 410, um, it, but it's in inches. So again, it's not all black and white. There's a little bit difference in the, in the system here. We're just not really going to get into it right now. Um, shotgun ammunition is the most versatile. So you have buckshot, uh, which are tend to be a little bit larger size, um, shot or little metal balls than the bird shot would be. And then a slug is going to be a single 
size, uh, usually like a one ounce piece of metal. And you can see there's different shapes and sizes and designs of slugs as well. Okay, so again, another, another design to the slug here. We've talked about this before, rim fire versus center fire. Rim fire is built right into the rim, extremely cheap um, to manufacture. Uh, the 22 long is the most popular rim fire caliper. And center fire is where it's going to strike it in the middle. So we can see at the bottom here this picture again. Um, to the right, the 45. It says 45 Auto and Federal. Federal is a manufacturer. 45 is the caliper. You can see the silver colored primer in the middle and it has an indentation in it. That was where the firing pin hit that and fired it. So this is a spent shell casing. And then next to it, um, that has a little bit of an indentation. You can see it on the bottom right hand corner there. That would be a rim fire shot. Okay, again, the head of the casing, REM here um, would be for Remington, another manufacturer. We can see where the firing pin hit the side, so this would be rim fire. And that brings us to ballistics. So that's another topic, um, and we will get to that in the future.